Welcome to the Cash Confident Podcast. I'm Bray Sedano, your fearless host, personal finance expert, and the visionary behind the revolutionary Cash Confident community. Oh, hello, fine people. Bree Sedano here for the Cash Confident Podcast. And today we are working on principles of limitless wealth, part two. So if you missed last, last week's episode, you would definitely want to go back and listen to it because it's it's got four of the seven principles. So you're going to want to hear those. So today we're going to work on the next three of the seven principles of limitless wealth. All right. You know what? I'm going to give you the smallest little recap just so that way we have context. And even if you did listen last week, maybe you don't remember everything because I'm sure you were listening while you were driving or cooking or something else. All right. So the first principle of limitless wealth is working with desire. And the reason that's so important is that it sets one, it, it activates our heart. So we put our heart into something when we really want it. So we're a little ballsier, a little bit more courageous, a little bit more on fire, a little bit more magnetic. And then also when we're playing with life, we're in that co-creative space because our desires are generally life working through us. So when we're on the path of true desire, life is working to get this desire met and so are we. And we're on fire because it's the truth of what we really want. And so desire helps us tap into that exponential, like we, we can move exponentially faster when we're on the path of true desire than when we're just slugging along, especially if you're working just to make money. Okay. The second principle of tapping into limitless wealth is really around setting goals that are beyond the edge of what your brain conceives as possible. So the, basically the premise is that the impossible is often easier. And this is true because when we're trying to just do a little bit more, make a little bit more money, serve a little a little bit more people in our business, get a little bit more, we're going to be in our linear thinking. And when we're looking at life that way, the amount of possibilities is endless. The amount of possibilities is endless. And that requires a ton of mental attention to examine each pathway, to look at the plan, look at the action, look at the amount of work that it would take to make decisions. And when there's unlimited possibilities, it's very easy to get stuck, to get stagnant, to get into a place of paralysis by analysis. So when we move our sights out to the edge, edge, just beyond the edge of what we see as possible into the space of something that's beyond, beyond something that's right at the edge of impossible, it narrows down the the pathways that we could get there. And then oftentimes the obstacles look very different and we start to see a little bit more just openness op options when we're, when plus we also free up all of that mental energy. So that's the second premise of the second principle of limitless wealth. The third principle of limitless wealth is learning how to let go. It's a skill that if you want to be limitless, if you always want to be in the exponential growth and that expansion, we're talking money that doesn't make sense. Really, if you want that really big juicy life, you have to learn to let go. And that's internal and external. So internal letting go might be letting go of thoughts, stories, emotions, belief structures, identities, who you think you are, how you think you act, things like that. And then on the external world, it might be giving up at tasks, giving up control, giving up parts of your business, or who run you giving up personal touching of those things of your business, projects, relationships, etc. So there's an internal and an external piece where sometimes you have to let something go inside of you. And sometimes you have to let something go from your life to be able to free yourself up. And that's really about energy management. It's about cutting off your energy from what no longer serves and redirecting that toward your growth, your expansion, your desires. Your, and I'm, when I'm talking about limitless wealth, I'm not talking about just money. I'm talking about your f big, juicy, abundant life. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about good relationships, time to play, fun to have, money for adventures, money for all your needs, investments, legacy, relationships. Like I'm talking about the full thing, the whole shebang, the cornucopia of what's good, right? Okay. And then the last principle we talked about last week, number four is the flow state. And flow state is, so flow state is this place where you're well-resourced, you're well-rested, you've played, you've had fun, you have this juicy life. And then when you come to work, you have so much in you to focus towards your thing. And flow state, if you look at the research around flow state is people are generally getting done in a flow state. And it, like, if you get a good few hours of flow state, you can typically get done what might take a week to get done otherwise. And when we work on flow state, our time is highly leveraged. And it's, you're not leveraged by anything other than your state, but 
it allows you to get, it allows you to have so much more time for free time for playing and whatever else. So the trick about flow states is that it's basically the rest of your life that cultivates the ability to have a flow state. But when you are working in flow state, your inspiration is cleaner, your intuition is there, you're getting your stuff done and you're just cruising right along. It's that place of like timeless where you're just doing, just doing your thing. And the more that we focus on creating that flow state, the more impact, the more, the more our businesses really thrive if you're in business, but a flow state is beautiful. Even if you're just using it to clean your house, like it's, it feels good. And when you finish a flow state, you're rejuvenated. Like it feels good. Like it's rejuvenation. Those are the four, first four principles of limitless wealth. So the fifth one that we're going to talk about today is proper supports. Proper support is critical for limitless wealth. And depending, like this, if you, like if you're just getting started in a financial journey, like I had a client once who she was a single mom going, she was going to school, trying to build a business. Right. And one of, one of the supports that she started to pay for was a YMCA membership because the YM, her local YMCA had babysitting that was included if she stayed in the YMCA building. So she would bring her, she would bring her computer and she would let somebody else watch her kids for a couple hours and she would get her work done uninterrupted. That was the highest level of support that she could afford, which I think was like 70 or $80 a month. And so that's one level. So that freed her up. For, her kids were little. And I've had clients stop p- paying for things like takeout and start paying for like a meal service. And it ended up being, in that case, it was, and it ended up being less expensive. So proper supports in your business that might be looking at, what am I doing? Am I the one that needs to be doing this? And getting proper supports. Sometimes it's at our house. A couple of years ago, I, I hired a, a housekeeper, somebody that comes twice a month and just cleans my whole house. And that level of support is so important to me. It's, it is critical to my success because I don't function great in a clean house. And also I don't really love to clean and I'm not really super good at it. And it takes me forever and I dread it and I don't want to do it. Um, that's a support that frees me up to be so much more successful. So This is, it's a business principle and it's a full life principle. So if you want limitless wealth, no matter where you're starting from, the idea that you should look through your money, look through your time and see where you're paying for band-aid level supports and then put in the highest level of support that you can reasonably afford, that's the move. That's the move to make. And then as you get that support in, then you're able to make more money, you're able to free up your time and your energy and then you're able to buy more and more supports. The other day, I actually posted a reel to my story. It was about Beyonce because there's a sting that goes around. And it's, girl, you have the same amount of hours per day as Beyonce. And somebody was like, no, I don't. And they did the math. And they're like, Beyonce has a chef. And that chef save her, saves her this much mental energy and this much time in the kitchen. And Beyonce has somebody to pick out her wardrobe. And that saves her this and this. And Beyonce has some a chauffeur that drives her kids back and forth to places. And that saves her this much time per day. And so she was like, Beyonce has 40 hours in a day. And I was like, oh, so it, it just hit me. It just hit me. Because I've actually said that to people. I'm like, you have the same amount of time in your day as Beyonce. But really, you don't. So, well, I don't. Maybe Maybe you have what beyond, maybe you have that level of support, but I'm not there yet. So though that paying for those levels of support, it frees up your time. It frees up your energy. It frees up your, and oftentimes it frees you up to make more money. So the thing about supports that always, that, that gets in the way for people is that they don't, they're like, I can't afford it. I don't have the money to pay for it. And then it's, and this is super, super true in business. So somebody will tell me that they're doing minimum wage activities in their business to save money. And I'm like, that doesn't work. I'm going to actually tell you a story about this because I had, so I had a, a client, financial advisor. He sold stocks and bonds and whatever. And he'd had he a rough couple of months in his business. And so he started doing some side work in the morning. So he was driving Uber or Lyft and he was spending about five hours a day doing that. And the total that he was making was about $2,500 a month of what he called stable income. All right, but he was waking up at four o'clock in the morning and, and doing that from four thirty until nine thirty and then going to his regular job. When I, when he was when we were talking about working together, I was like, if you want to be my client, you will have to immediately let go of this side job. You will not I don't even I don't even want to work with you if you're gonna to continue to do this. And the reason was is because he was tired. He was so exhausted from waking up in the middle of the night to do this that he was not showing up with pizzazz. So I was like, you're you and your regular business, you have the possibility of making hundreds of dollars an hour. 
and you're not showing up at full force because you've spent your energy doing this, the small thing. So he had to let it go. And it was like the, that was a thing that where he was going for out of fear and it really stopped him. So that's, I guess he didn't add a support other than telling somebody telling him, he added me to tell him to stop doing that. But that was part of it. It's like he, I don't know how to say it. It's like having proper supports in place is a thing is because it, it's an investment in yourself, right? So when he hired me that next year, he did so much better in business, so much better. And he had more energy and was spending less time because it was like he wasn't using 25 hours of peak morning energy for the for his lowest wage stuff. So getting proper supports really makes the difference. And this kind of plays on the previous one of letting go, but it's both. It's both, right? But that's how that dude made so much more money. He's employing these principles of limitless wealth. All right. Momentum. All right. So momentum, this is a big, this is a big principle because it shows up everywhere. So I'm going to talk about the skill of directional focus. I'm going to talk about choice and I'm going to talk about the attitude that we bring to everything because all of these things contribute to our momentum. All right. So recently I did a masterclass called the astonishing power of directional focus, which is a mouthful, but our focus, what we focus on grows, what we focus on grows. So if my focus is all over the place, if my focus is on things I don't want, if my focus is on the past, if my focus is too far in the future and not, not in the present, I'm going to create life that's messy. That's the way that shows up. So my ability to stay focused on my desires creates momentum. My ability to discern what choices, actions, behaviors, habits to put in place to stay on that path that I want, the path of my desires, creates momentum. My abil- my attitude about how I deal with life and relate to life in terms of like scarcity and abundance creates momentum. Or if I'm looking at, listen, in business, in everything that we do, we're going to have this creation. We're going to have creations. And you, as you do better and better in life, you get better and better problems. One of my mentors says like, for example, one of, one of the things I'm looking forward to is I want to pay six figures in taxes. I want to write a six figure check to the government. And while most people avoid want to do that, I'm like, that's a problem I want to have. I want to have to figure out how to get six figures together. I want to be surprised by a six figure tax bill. Maybe not like fully surprised. I'm like, I have an accountant. We have our, we have the stuff together, but it's because that what a good problem to have. Right. And so I, the way that we frame these, everything contributes so much to our momentum. So let's just say I get a, a surprise six-figure tax bill and I look at it like it's a problem and I've done something wrong. Now, I'm, now I've am now i problemized my success, right? That's not what I want. I want to love that tax bill. I want to send that money with kisses. I'll be like, dear government, don't use it all in one place, right? Use it wisely. So momentum is it's about our focused attention. It's about our choices, our decisions, using our imagination in the right way. So like mental momentum creates so much momentum. And that's being able to handle momentum is one of the principles of limitless wealth. If you want that full life, that full life juiciness, that full life wealth, you have to be able to handle momentum because once you start rolling, it can go fast or you can not let it go fast by nitpicking, by you know, getting into problem solving mode, by looking for obstacles, looking for delays, looking for problems, looking for what's wrong, looking for getting into the self help matrix of what's wrong with me, why am I like, why did I have this imperfection in my business? Why? So momentum, staying with it, keep moving forward when things are imperfect or hard, or you've had to eat a disappointment today or rejection. That's one of the that's one of the principles of limitless wealth. If you want full life, juiciness, abundance, expansion, etc., learning to be with momentum is one of the things that you'll have to learn. All right, and then the last one is a juicy topic. I'm, I'm if you guys are watching, I'm just looking at my notes. I have them up on my wall over there. So the last skill or the last principle of limitless wealth is emotional range. And if you've been following my work for a little bit, you've definitely heard me talk about this because it's something I bring up pretty regularly. So most of us want a life of abundance. So we want big money, big business, big vacations, house, like we want abundance of life. We want depth of relationship. We want intimacy. We want the whole shebang from our life. 
And that requires emotional range that can handle what we're asking for. So sometimes people have an emotional range the size of a teacup, but they're asking for a life the size of a 10-gallon bucket. And I'm like, oh, that's not going to work. You literally won't. You can't handle what you're asking for. Your emotions are, you're, that's going to, that tea, your little teacup of emotional range isn't going to match the 10-gallon bucket of a life you're asking for. Emotional range is a thing that most of us, when we're children, we learn to repress, deny, or sometimes even unconsciously express certain feelings. So lots of, so here, mm, let's just say, for example, you're a little kid and you're crying and somebody's stop crying. Here's a popsicle. Stop crying. Okay. So your feelings are dismissed. You're not allowed to have your feelings. You're given a little treat. Okay. Or sometimes I've had clients say they're having big feelings. They're angry. They're crying. And somebody's, I'm going to give you something to cry about. I'll give you something to cry about if you don't stop crying. And so then we learn that there's danger about having these feelings. And so most of us don't have full access to our emotional range. We've learned to put up some defense mechanisms for our heart against really big feelings. We've learned to not feel super hurt or super sad or super angry. And we'll put in maybe some emotional defense mechanisms like annoyance, right? So for years, I'm telling you years, I did not have access. I just thought I wasn't angry. I didn't think I was like repressing anger. I just thought I wasn't angry, but I never felt angry. And then I was working with a mentor and she really helped me to get into my body, feel that anger. And I was like, oh my goodness, there's so much anger in here. I'm so angry. Like I, I, w- I was, and I wasn't angry at anything. I was just being with the feeling of anger in my body. And then as time went on, I learned that anger is super useful. <laughs> anger helps hold boundaries. Anger is sturdy. Anger is a is an emotion that is part of life. It's something that... All of our emotions, all of our emotions have the energy that we need for the moment that they're there. Like they, they're appropriate. All of our emotions are appropriate, but we judge them and we don't let ourselves have them. And so then what ends up happening is in time, our emotional range gets smaller and smaller. And so we're only okay, maybe in annoyance and not full rage, right? Because annoyance is just less, less, less angry, right? I don't know. Maybe it's not even anger, right? But if I'm not willing to experience the super squishy, tenderest love or because it also emotional range, it, what doesn't work is you don't just get to have the super good side and not the super hard side, right? It's like the, like I just said, like the super tender bits are really intense. They're really intense. Those are intense feelings, like intense joy, intense tenderness. They feel good. We're here for it. That's like the stuff of life. But if we can't feel the depth of a heartbreak, we're not going to be able to feel the tenderness either. So emotional range is one of those things that I'm always working with my clients on because that's the bit where it's you're asking for this life, but can you handle it? You're asking for a 10 gallon life. Can you handle all of the feelings that come with that? And I'm going to just ground this with a story for you. So for example, my book is coming out in December and this has been in the works for a long time. And what I want is the book to be a New York Times bestseller. That's what I want. That's my intention. That's what I'm hoping for. Now, do I currently have the emotional range? No, I probably don't. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. So you'll hear me keep talking about this because it's something I'm working on. No, am I, I'm, a li- I'm honestly, I'm a little afraid and probably unwilling to feel the praise, the honor, the judgment, the critique, the criticism, any random hatred that's going to come my way. Because for me to sell that many books, I'm going to have to go out outside of my corner of the internet that I'm already known and loved. I'm going to have to go out into the cold waters of the inter- and interwebs, right? Like I'm going to get a publicist. There's going to be absolute strangers who don't know me, who are going to potentially fall in love with me, but also potentially be super, super mean to me, right? And so if I'm not willing to feel the fullness of what is required of that experience, I'm not going to have the guts to go out there and push that book as need, as hard as I would need to get the 12,000 copies. Now, does it it's sold, right? The 12,000 copies in a week sold, which I think is the requirement, but I haven't searched that for a little bit. But anyways, so it's, if I'm not willing to put all those big emotions on the table, now that's not to say that it's going to happen. It's just to say that it's possible, right? Is it possible that everybody who comes in contact with my book falls absolutely in love with me? Sure. Sure, it's possible. But is it also possible that I'm going to get some random hate? People are going to not like my book. People are going to tell me whatever. Yeah, also possible. But if I'm not willing to experience that level of attention, if I'm not willing to experience that level of praise, if I'm not willing to experience that level of criticism, 
I'm not going to have the guts to do the thing that I need to do to have the big book sales. That's the way That's the way that emotional range plays out. It's if you're too scared to feel big feelings, you won't do the big things. And so if you want to tap into that of life, you have to be willing to play with life. And that means fully. And that's that means that you got to get your heart ready to feel all of the feelings. And so these are the principles of limitless wealth. And so these things sound very non-related to financials, right? All of these principles are are really about self and about how we live with life. But what I find is when you have these seven principles, when you are actively working with and practicing these seven principles, your money grows exponentially. I work with clients all the time doing this. So it's about also there's strategies for people's businesses and their sales and there's systems for their money management, which go actually is part of the momentum. But when we want big full life abundance, it's about money, but it's about more than that. And so it's really about getting into these principles of limitless wealth. These things are the principles that allow us to grow exponentially. These things, when we're practicing on these seven things, we can skyrocket our income, transform our lives, have better relationships, have everything that we want and hope and dream for, and then do it again, 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 right? These are the principles of li- like you tap into limitlessness because it's exponential because you're not trying to grow linearly. You're not trying to do a little at a time. You're, you're growing as not, it's not like a rush. It's not like you're growing as fast as you can. It's just different. The energy of exponential growth is different than the energy of linear growth. The energy of 10 times is just easier and different than the energy of a double. It just is. So I don't know. So I hope you learned something. I hope these gave you some ideas. I hope that you're examining your life and seeing where you can add more of the principles of limitless wealth. And no matter where you are, these principles apply whether or not you have a business. They apply whether or not you're just getting started. They're for everybody because they're principles of growth. They're principles of growth and expansion. And as you grow and expand, you have bigger and bigger capacity for money, for wealth, for, for sales, for clients, for all the things. All right. So I love you. I appreciate you. And I will talk to you next week. Bye. Everyone.